Is the Antichrist on earth right now? Yes, I believe so. And we're going to go over the scriptures to see where he is, where he's actually located. You could look at probably a, a thousand videos on YouTube about the Antichrist and all of the ideas, where he is, who he is, if he's King uh, Charles of England or um, who knows. There's so many different uh, Elon Musk and... Um, there's a million, there's a thousand different ideas of who he could be and proof and solid proof. And what's interesting though is I think most of us realize that he's most likely going to be somebody that we don't suspect, right? He's not going to be some evil Putin or Hitler type person. He's going to be somebody that nobody su suspects and he's going to come out of left field and we just don't know where he's coming from, right? So that's why I think this, why I want to talk about this, why I think it's so important. Everybody's studying the book of Revelation or some other um, uh, prophet or even the gospels to, and looking around the world to see who is, who fits the bill for the um, Antichrist if his name adds up to 666 and all these things as many scriptures point to. But what's interesting is I think that the answer is in a book in a chapter that most people ignore because they've relegated it to being a fulfilled prophecy even though it says three times in that in that chapter oh this is for the end times it's for the latter times it's for the time of the end it says it three times that it's for this and people say oh that's already fulfilled well i disagree and you can watch my other videos on daniel 8 daniel chapter 8 that's where i think the answer is and that's where we're going to go look right now we're going to see that i think it shows us where the antichrist is right now all right we're going to go in daniel chapter 8 and i'm going to go kind of fast because i i know that you want to find out right away where he is so i want to get to that as soon as possible within uh, a short time you're going to know where the antichrist is in verse 23, Daniel 8, verse 23, and in the latter time, first I want to identify that this is talking about the Antichrist. Now look at this language and tell me who this could possibly be speaking about. You'll see it's the Antichrist. In the latter time of their kingdom, when the transgressors have reached their fullness, a king shall arise, having fierce features, who understands sinister schemes. Verse 24, his power shall be mighty, but not by his own power, he shall destroy fearfully. You need to compare that that to Revelation. In Revelation, I think it's chapter uh, 13, uh, this uses the same language talking about his power is not his own power. It's talking about the Antichrist. And shall prosper and thrive. He shall destroy the mighty and also the holy people. Verse 25, through his cunning, he shall cause deceit to prosper under his rule, and he shall exalt himself in his heart. He shall destroy many in their prosperity. He shall even rise against the prince of princes, but he shall be broken without human means. Uh, who else could it be talking about? It uh, Absolutely, it sounds like it's talking about the Antichrist. But now let's go back to verse 8. So it's Daniel 8, verse 8. Um, it says, therefore, so now, to get the whole idea of Daniel, you need to watch a few of my other videos. I'm not going to rehash it here, but just to jump to the point, in Daniel 8, you have these two main figures. They're two animals, uh, a goat, a male goat, and a ram. I believe the male goat, which is called Greece by the, the archangel Gabriel, is, he explains it to Daniel that it's actually Greece. But I think Greece is symbolic of the United States of America. And you might say, wait, don't you think that United States is Babylon? Yeah, no problem. There are many cases where one place in the Bible is described symbolically with different names. Even Jerusalem at one point is called Sodom, like Sodom and Gomorrah. Jerusalem is compared to Sodom and Egypt. There's so many different symbol symbols that can be used at different times for different reasons. So I have no problem understanding that the United States in one set of uh, prophecies about Babylon, it can be called Babylon or Chaldea, but in this case, I think it's called Greece, and for a good reason. See that in my other video. There's a lot of similarities between ancient Greece, their power, their language, their military, their um, democracy, their people, and the United States of America right now in these end times. You go and watch those and think about it yourself, too, if there are similarities. There are a lot of similarities there. And how else would, um, if, it, if, the, if 
the Lord were giving a symbol of the United States, what better way than to use ancient Greece? Because it's really similar in a lot of ways. Okay, so I believe the sh that male goat is United States and that Persia, well, Persia is Persia, it's Iran, it's still the same thing. We know that there is a huge problem simmering, building up between the United States and Iran, when it's actually gonna come to a, an actual kinetic conflict, when there will actually be war, which a lot of people are beating the drums of war for the United States and Iran, who knows? It, it, it seems like it could have happened any time the last 20 or 30 years, but it is building up a lot now with the things that are going on in Israel. But a lot, we've seen this come and go, uh, the tension builds and then it dies down. We'll see what happens. I think that we are closer than ever um, because Iran now has, uh, they're pretty sure has the nuclear capabilities and they call the United States the great Satan and Israel the little Satan. They, it's, Time is running short, and I think many of you brothers and sisters know that. So now let's read in verse 8. In verse 8 it says, Therefore the male goat grew great, very great. But when he became strong, the large horn was broken. It sounds like the large horn would be the president or the leader, probably the president if it's the United States, and it's broken. He's broken. Um, and in place of it, four notable ones came up toward the four winds of heaven. So it sounds like, I know it sounds crazy, but again, who would have ever believed when Germany was big and powerful in Europe, who would have believed that Germany would have been, if you told Germans, Germany is gonna be divided into East and West, they would say, hey, we'll never do that. Germany is a great country, it's never gonna be divided. Who could possibly divide it? I believe the United States could be divided into four parts to weaken it. Anyway, it says that um, and you probably say, oh, you'll have the same reaction, right? No, the United States, who could ever possibly divide it? We're already seeing a lot of division in the United States. Aren't we seeing a lot of division? I mean, how could it possibly be divided up, right? Because people, all the different uh, ideologies and beliefs are spread out all over the country. But um, we, we know, well, we'll leave that for another time. So in verse 9, and out of one of them, out of one of those four sections, out of one of them came a little horn. And many people know that the little horn is referring to the Antichrist. It came a little horn, which grew exceedingly great toward the south, toward the east, and toward the glorious land. And it grew up to, to the host of heaven, and it cast down some of the host and some of the stars to the ground and trampled them. And that's why I believe this is the Antichrist, because this, or Satan, or Antichrist, some connection, I can't, I'm not gonna claim that I understand the connection between Satan, the Antichrist, and the, the dragon, and the Antichrist, and the image, and the false prophet, and how they're all related and connected. Um, but we know that this is evil. I don't believe this is just a man, because it says he grew exceedingly, uh, he cast, cast down some of the host and some of the stars to the ground and trampled them. Uh, I don't know what man could do that. Uh, he even exalted himself as high as the prince of the host, and by him the daily sacrifices were taken away, and the place of his sanctuary was cast down. A lot of people believe that, that this can't be yet because the daily sacrifices aren't happening. True, I believe that too. We're all looking for that when the daily sacrifices start again. Because of transgression, an army was given over to the horn to oppose the daily sacrifices, and he cast truth down to the ground. He did all this and prospered. So read over these scriptures again, brother, but the brothers and sisters, but the answer is right there. So I believe that it's the United States is the one that goes and attacks Iran. Because in uh, Daniel 8, it says it goes over the whole surface of the earth without touching the earth. That's what the United States, by sea and by air, is uh, uh, going to attack Iran. And so then when, after that happens, the U.S. is attacked somehow, it sounds like, and it sounds like the president, something happens to him, he's broken. And then that it sounds like the U.S. is divided into four parts. And out of one of those parts, and here's the answer, out of one of those parts of the U.S., I don't know what part, out of one of those parts, the Antichrist comes, the little horn. 
tell me what your theory on the Antichrist is. Where do you think he comes from? I know that everyone has a different idea and you've heard him. I'm not saying that this is 100%. This is just one that seems really clear and obvious to me. And if it is true, it should harmonize with the other theories, right? The other ideas, um, no, not necessarily the other theories, because there can be um, conflicting theories, but whatever the other truth is that's mentioned in Revelation about the Antichrist, the beast, the false prophet, and I know they're different people, but they work together. Uh, so I'm really interested to know what you believe, but whatever you believe, because prophecy is kind of important, but we prophecy is not our salvation. We're saved by grace through Yeshua Messiah, through Jesus Christ. Uh, the prophecy is like a map. It's not a crystal ball. Prophecy is like a map. You use a map as you're driving. You see, oh, here's that street, and then you see it there. You can. It helps you to identify where you are at the time, um, but it's not like a predictive or some type of Nostradamus type tool to predict the future. Um, but it is interesting to speculate about it and to think about it. I'm always interested to hear different people's theories on it. I'm interested to hear yours. But the most important thing is we are living in the end times. And if you ever had a time that you thought you should start reading the Bible, this is the time. I know most of you do, but if you're on the edge and you're not sure, this is the, the time to start reading your Bible. Start in Genesis. Start in the beginning. Read straight through to the end and then go over again. You have plenty of time. It's not that big of a book in some ways, and in other ways, it's a very big book. Read the Bible, just keep reading it. It will be, it's the most important tool that you have, and it will greatly help you. So please read the scripture, no matter what your background and your beliefs are.